This Sunday on Capital Connection, it's the biggest battle in Springfield over the budget and your pocketbook. How much should you pay in taxes? We're ready to stand with any lawmaker, any person that has a credible plan to turn this state forward. Voters will likely get a chance to weigh in in November 2020. We talked to Senator Don Harmon coming up. And the fight for cheaper drugs, if not in the country, at least in Illinois. Illinoisans, especially those over 50, are suffocating under the consistently skyrocketing cost of prescription drugs. Why that complicated debate hit a snag at a House committee. We'll explain with House Democrat Will Gazzardi. And why do some conservatives in downstate want a divorce from Chicago? Let's build a wall around Cook County and get Chicago to pay for it. Let's make Illinois great again. Hashtag fight for 51. God bless Illinois. We talked to two Republican lawmakers stirring the pot at a gun rights rally on Wednesday. It's all coming up on Capital Connection. From the Illinois State Capitol, this is your Capital Connection. Welcome to Capital Connection. I'm Mark Maxwell. Set your calendars between now and November 2020. From here until that point, the biggest battle in Springfield is over Governor Pritzker's campaign proposal to change the state from a flat tax to a progressive income tax. That story took another turn this week as Senate Republicans filed a counter proposal and Senate Democrats and House Democrats came together for a press conference to demonstrate how this would be a tax cut for most people in Illinois. Here's a look at that news conference from Thursday. And so a plan that says 97% of the people across this state will have their taxes stay the same or be lowered is very different than saying, I don't care whether your kid has, if it, whether you need a math grant. If they believe that we can cut 15% at least uh, throughout the budget, and that's something that they can support and put their votes on, then let's see it. And if, if people um, know what they're going in to vote for on, in November of 2020 and know what, how it's going to affect their pocketbook, we think that's a good conversation for us to be having. We think it's a transparent conversation for us to be having. And joining us now is Senator Don Harmon from Oak Park, a Democrat uh, who is advocating. You've actually been pushing for a progressive income tax. Can I say the longest of anyone in this building? That in a I think if anyone's still left in the Senate, yes. If anyone's still left in the Senate. So the, the, the last, it would have been the last of the Mohicans, but you're still fighting, and now you have a governor in your corner. Uh, that has to be good news for your effort. It, it changes the complexion of the debate tremendously. Uh, the first time we called this it was actually now State Treasurer Frerichs and Attorney General Raul and I were the three sponsors of the amendment and we didn't get anywhere. Um, so you're I, the only non-constitutional officer left of those. <laughs> What's next for you? I, I'm very happy serving in the Senate and looking forward to passing the fair tax. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back to that, the, the issue here. Uh, there, there's this either or argument that Democrats are making. Either we pass this progressive income tax and raise the rate that rich people pay into the state, or we have to decimate state government and, and do a lot of the things that Governor Rauner proposed. Well, it's not quite that. I think Governor Pritzker laid out the three options very clearly. We have to address the $3.2 billion structural budget deficit that we have cemented in place under Governor Rauner. And in order to make up that deficit, there are really three choices. We can make deep draconian cuts across critical services that people expect state government to provide, education, health care, and the like. We can raise taxes on everyone by almost 20 percent using the existing flat tax. Uh, neither of those proposals has any support among the public or, frankly, even among legislators who are critical of the fair tax. So why is it important to use them as alternative options in this discussion? Because those are the options. The status quo is not an option. That's what people have to understand. We can't just maintain the tax rate at what it is and keep providing uh, the services we've been providing and people expect us to provide without digging deeper and deeper and deeper into the hole. This is the time to stop kicking the can down the road, and we have to do one of those three things. We have to cut spending, or we have to raise taxes on everyone, or we can enact the fair tax where lower rates would apply to lower income levels and higher rates would apply to higher income levels. And under Governor Rauner's proposal, uh, we could uh, lower taxes, however modestly, for 97% of taxpayers in Illinois uh, and still generate enough money to fill that budget deficit. You said however modestly. I believe Governor Pritzker's proposal in its current form, and I understand this is under negotiation, it may change, 
but it is rather modest. It shaves off just the slightest bit. And the biggest change to the tax code comes where uh, people start making more than $250,000 a year. That's where it starts rising dramatically. It's a small savings or a shaving of the income tax for people who make less than that. Um, is that to your liking, or would you like to see that tax cut be even larger? We'd all love to cut taxes for our constituents. That's the easiest vote in Springfield. For people on the bottom of the income ladder. Right. This is the, the tension. Um, and I have a cartoon on my desk facing everybody who comes in to sit with me. And it's one dog saying to another dog, I would not be opposed to a cat tax. Everybody likes taxes that somebody else pays. What we're trying to do is strike a balance. This is not a soak the rich proposal. We're asking people who are earning more to pay their fair share, to pay what they are able. We are providing uh, pro uh, income tax relief to 97% of taxpayers. The more you make, the more modest that relief becomes. That's just simple math. Republicans have argued and will continue to argue. They're in the super minority, so it's up to the voters, essentially, in 2020. But they're arguing that it is a soak the rich proposal, and that not only that, but it would also splash onto the middle class. Uh, I'm gonna play a quick soundbite from Senator Dan McConkie, one of your colleagues here. Uh, he's saying, okay, Democrats want to crack open the Constitution and rewrite a portion of it to uh, change to a graduated income tax. Well, let's, while we're doing that, let's also rewrite the Constitution to do this. Uh, what this uh, constitutional amendment would simply do is require that we have a supermajority, a two-thirds majority, in order to uh, enact any new tax hikes. Given the plethora of taxes that are being introduced right now, bag tax, gas tax, marijuana tax, vaping tax, the list goes on, uh, as well as potentially graduated income tax, uh, in which the rates uh, are not, would, would not be required to go through supermajority going forward. I think that it is important to put this standard in place for the provision of any taxes going forward. So why is he wrong? He's saying there that a supermajority is already needed to change the Constitution. Fifteen other states require some sort of a supermajority to raise any taxes at all. If we're going to fundamentally change the way we set tax rates in Illinois, then while we're at it, let's make it harder to raise those taxes so you have broader public support. Is that a bad idea or a good idea? It's a bad policy idea, and it's a cheap political stunt. Uh, it's really hard to raise taxes. I, I've been down here for 17 years now. We've raised the income tax uh, once in that time. In the last 30 years, we've raised it twice. It's a really difficult thing to do. And having the fair tax in place is not going to make it any easier for us to raise income taxes on middle class families. In fact, in some ways, it could make it harder. Sure it would. If you're only raising it on 10% of the population, not 100% of the population, isn't that an easier lift? I don't think those are the middle class families that the Republicans are claiming to be concerned about. We could not raise taxes on the broad swath of the middle class uh, without uh, raising uh, a fuss among our constituents. But you hit the nail on the head. They are shilling for their wealthy supporters. Their, their real concern is not with middle class families, it's that this would somehow allow us to raise taxes on people making a million dollars more easily. It's still a difficult thing to do. It's still difficult to muster a majority to raise taxes. And it will continue to be difficult to do even with a fair tax in place. So uh, you've looked at this issue for a long time, longer than any current sitting legislator uh, you've been pushing this. Uh, your initial proposal, if I remember correctly, would have just raised the entire flat tax and then offered sort of like rebates or um, uh, tax breaks to people who, uh, based on their income, is that correct? No, or, no, it's not. And, okay. and But it, that's something that uh, uh, Governor Blagojevich's team was actually kicking around, a sort of synthetic graduated tax. Sure. It always had some constitutional vulnerabilities, and there was a reason we never did it. The last time I proposed this, it was actually relatively similar to the governor's proposal. My break-even point was a little lower, 296% uh, uh, of families, everyone earning less than $204,000 would have gotten a tax break. Um, Governor Pritzker took that same model and, uh, and uh, I think took advantage of uh, Speaker Madigan's earlier millionaire surcharge to increase rates uh, at the higher end a little more than I did under my proposal. Okay. But it's, it's very similar uh, uh, thematically with what I proposed several years ago. So Governor Pritzker talks about stabilizing the state's budget. It's something that uh, the fiscal policy wonks have wanted to do here in Illinois for a long time and make this less of a uh, chaotic state to do business in. But I believe it was Crane Chicago Business that just this week pointed out that, okay, if there's just, in, in uh, the press release that came out along with your press news conference this week, it said that in Champaign County, 
only like I think most of the new revenue would come from like 0.15% of the population. Basically, a couple of millionaires live there, and they're going to pay a lot more. Everybody else is going to see a little bit of a tax cut. So what happens when two or three of those five or six millionaires say, eh, let's move across state lines here and save ourselves a lot of money? That does alter the equation, doesn't it? Well, we can get into tax policy pretty deeply, but let's, let's keep it at a higher level. You, you pay taxes based on where you make your income. So if they're going to continue to make their income in Illinois, they're going to pay taxes here in Illinois. If they're not earning their income in Illinois today, they're going to keep paying taxes in the state where they earn the income. So it's not that simple as changing your residency. Right. Um, it's also, we don't really see people moving based on tax policy, especially when the increase is relatively modest in the grand scheme. Um, well, Illinois' richest man, Ken Griffin, talked about moving his hedge fund to New York City, up and moving it. Now, New York City has a high tax there too. Yeah. But, so maybe he's not leaving for that reason. Right. But if he's leaving, mm -hmm and taking all that revenue with him, doesn't that punch a revenue hole in this plan? How do, you, how do you fight against that? Well, first of all, people move to and from Illinois every single day. It's very useful to point out that when the richest man in Illinois talks about moving, he's talking about moving to a higher tax state. It's not because the taxes here are too high. It may well be because the, the instability in Illinois is too problematic. Uh, but Chicago in particular is attracting more businesses, more wealthy individuals, and more young professionals starting their careers uh, than anywhere else. Um, that trend will continue. I, to your point about geography, uh, there's an argument that people in Chicago, there are more millionaires and half millionaires and $250,000 earners than there are in Champaign County. So the Chicago metropolitan area is certainly going to pay its fair share. Uh, and that's why many of my downstate colleagues should be looking really hard at supporting this. And I their constituents would do better than mine. And I imagine uh, I know where you might stand on this, but later in our show, we're going to hear from two downstate Republicans from Central Illinois who on Wednesday rallied in front of the State House steps, in front of the Lincoln statue, a man who said, a house divided against itself shall not stand. And they said, let's divide this house of Illinois. Let's split it up. Let's get Chicago in its own state and the rest. Uh, what's your view of that it's, suggestion? Uh, uh, cheap Chicago bashing, and if I can take the liberty of speaking for suburban Cook County, we'd like to be with Chicago, and I bet the collar counties would feel the same way. So you want to divide up the state that way, uh, it's really going to end badly for my downstate colleagues. All right, Senator Don Har uh, Harmon, thank yep. you for joining us. Before we get to those two Republicans, another big issue going on in the State House here, how the state might find ways to lower the cost of your prescription drugs. That hit a bit of a snag this week. We'll take a closer look when we come back.